it's completely shifted my attitude towards Islam. Before, I just thought this is a false religion. Now I'm like, oh no, this is a tool of Satan. This is a tool of Satan, and the people who are following it are unknowingly soldiers of the devil. Mm of the highest degree, right? His strong, some of his strongest foot soldiers. God made a religion, it's Christianity. The devil made a religion, it's called Islam. Mm. I didn't know that the prophet Muhammad, the person who invented the religion, raped a nine-year-old girl. This is a fact. Mm. He married a girl at six years old and then consummated the marriage at nine. That is rape. And the reason why it doesn't phase the average Muslim when you bring that up to them is because Jesus is not in their heart. It's because the Holy Spirit, God, is not in their heart. Young Don, if you see this, somebody clips and send this to you, I hope you're going to be fair and honest and, and open enough that when I give the references from the Bible, you're going to go and look them up. And if you're going to make any kind of accusations against Islam and the Prophet of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, then I hope that you will make the same exact words against other traditions when I bring them up. Otherwise, well, your sincerity will be known to everybody. Uh, talking about pedophilia, I'm going to bring up something from his Bible. And I know he feels he doesn't need to defend his Bible, but he needs to at least defend his statements now, right? Mashallah. They're going to want to hear this one. Oh, yeah. They're definitely going to want to hear this one. Listen, I want to give a quick disclaimer right now. This is not an enticement of violence, harassment, bullying, uh, threats. We don't want to hear out that, you know, because of you guys, we did this to Don or we sent him this message. We don't want to get any of this smoke. Listen, the reality is, Don, if you're watching this, we just have a question for you. You've been going on streams on your channel every single day. Click on it. You have a title that doesn't have anything to do with Islam. So it shows you started the stream with the intention of talking about something. And then eventually you start talking about about Islam. And then two hours later, it's deleted. Like, I don't understand this, bro. Like, if you're going to say it, why are you deleting it? You know? But unfortunately, you had to, you know, ask for the smoke. So, Sheikh Uthman is going to deliver today, inshallah. Look, before we even start, I just want to say, we want good for you. Don, in case you watch this or somebody sends you the clip, but we want good for you. Uh, we want you to be guided towards the truth. We want you to follow what is truth. And we... We feel that you are sincere in the fact that you do want to find the truth, but maybe the way you're going about it is incorrect. Instead of having a discussion face-to-face, -face, instead of talking it through, just making streams and watching Islamophobes, by the way, all those people that you watched and you talk about watching, I've already debated them face-to-face, -face, and you can go watch those debates on the One Message Foundation, Foundation channel. You can see how they fell apart. Know. If you really want to know the truth, we're, we're, we're inviting you right now. Jump on. Even if you want to come in during the, half the show and we'll have a civil conversation with evidences, with references that you can look up, bring your references. If you want to bring any of your little friends, Apis or Mr. Hammer Time or any of them, bring them. We're right here, live, bring it. Christianity and Islam, which is a devil. And you can see it in the behaviors after the fact. If I went on that stream and I had talked with all those Muslims and, you know, and I didn't know anything about Islam. I didn't know that the prophet Muhammad, the person who invented the religion, raped a nine-year-old girl. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. He married a girl at six years old and then consummated the marriage at nine. That is rape. Anybody that wants to try and tell me that a nine-year-old girl can have consensual mm -hmm. sex with a 53-year-old man, you're sick. Mm -hmm. Or they're just so deluded. And the reason why it doesn't phase the average Muslim when you bring that up to them is because Jesus is not in their heart. It's because the Holy Spirit, God, is not in their heart to strengthen that morale. How do you hear this? and try to look past it or rationalize that the man, the, the Quran, see, I learned a lot about Islam after the fact, you know what I mean? What, what like people, after the call, after, after the, the call. Yeah. Because I went into it looking, thinking that I was about to learn about Islam, mm -hmm. but in them, you know, coming for me, I had to now go and learn about it on my own terms. When you talk about rape, I don't know where the idea of rape came from, but let's talk about marriage and let's talk about the age of Aisha radiallahu anha. None of us are mentally present at the time of birth. None of us notice, hey, you're born, and you're like, hey, I'm born today, what's the time, what's the date, right? If we ask anyone here, when you were born, you're gonna look at a birth certificate, you're gonna look at your passport, you're gonna go ask your mom, you don't remember, right? So you're basically taking information from other sources, and if those sources have some ambiguity, then you're gonna pass that on. Arabs had no calendar, understand this, that the Arabs 
had no calendar. I don't mean that they didn't have lunar or solar. I mean, they had no calendar. Basically, they would have events like Amal Fil, the year when Abraha attacked Mecca with the elephant, and they would kind of give it a name from an event or a drought or a flood or a lot of rain, and they would give it a name, and they would try to map ages from that. And that's why, not just discussing Aisha radhi anha, even Khatija radhi Allah anha, the first wife of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, who, by the way, as long as he was married to, he didn't marry any other woman. Uh, she passed away, and then he married other women after that. But until she was alive, she was his only wife. Even her age disputed. Why? Because again, the Arabs were not concerned about recording your birth date. Most of the early scholars also, we know their death dates, we don't know their birth date. For the early scholars of Islam and the Sahaba and so on. Some of them, we have ideas because if they have major... Uh, events that happened that year, like the year of the field, Amal field of the elephant, with the year that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was born. And because of that major event, we know. But if people were born in years where there weren't major events, then it's very hard to know their exact age. What we can say about Aisha Taradiyanha, that her age was appropriate for the time for marriage. And how do we know that? That she was already engaged to Jubair ibn Mut'im, before she was even engaged, I'm not talking about marriage, I'm talking about engagement to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. For us to judge that age today is what's called presentism. This is, this is not fair, this is not uh, appropriate. Why, um, Rami, if you can, on your screen, bring up uh, Safari, Google, Chrome, I don't really care. Look up average life expect expectancy, 6th century. Yeah. And for anyone that didn't hear that, that's the logical fallacy of presentism. Okay, 30 to 35. 30 to 35 years old. Think about that. This is the 6th century. This is when the Prophet ﷺ was born. This is the time we're looking at. In that time period, your average life expenses was 30 to 35. Today, it's about 77 years of age. In Hong Kong, in Japan, it's around 80. Okay? So today, when we talk about the age of marriage being 18, that would not be practical for that time. Today, when we talk about, oh, uh, he's too young to get married, she's too young to get married, what do we talk about? They haven't finished their schooling, right? She didn't finish high school, she didn't finish college, he didn't get a degree yet. Yeah. Uh, understand, in those times, you didn't have any of that. So when a girl was physically mature, when, when the biological indicators were there, for example, she got her period or... You know, other signs that show maturity, they would get married because nature would tell them you are now physically ready to get married. And that was very common. They didn't have school to go to. They didn't have med school. They didn't have any of this. They didn't, you know, this is what they did. Men at the time when they were physically capable would go out and work. They would do trade. They would go plant seeds. Uh, you know, they would, they would farm. Today, if we take a 12 year old and put them to work, people say this is uh, child labor laws. You know, you, this is abusing uh, children and you know, you're, you're taking advantage of the child because he should finish his schooling. But that would mean the whole world was abusing children at the time because everybody, when they were physically old enough, 12, 13, 14 years of age, they would go out and work, right? So this is a, this is a fallacy. This is, this is something that is not correct. And anybody with a bit of logic would understand, this, right? At that time, this was the regular way or age to get married. But if we have uh, Mr. Young... Don, uh, talking about pedophilia, I'm going to bring up something from his Bible. And I know he feels he doesn't need to defend his Bible, but he needs to at least defend his statements now, right? Um, if you don't mind, uh, Rami, can you bring up the first screenshot that I sent you? 100%. Excellent. So I'm going to give you guys some Bible verses, and I'm going to leave the screenshot there, and I want to discuss it in a minute. Um, but I want everybody to write down these verses as well, so they can keep this as a record. If we look in the Bible, the Bible that uh, Mr. Don claims to believe in, that he's promoting, that Christians hand out to us, that give out, that you go to hotels and you find it in their drawers. Uh, in Genesis 17:17, 17, 17, we find, and if one of you guys can take some notes here as well, that Sarah was 90 when Abraham was 100. Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, Sarah, right? So Sarah was how old? She was 90 when Ibrahim, Abraham was 100 according to Genesis 17:17. 17, 17. You got me? Okay. 
So now I, in Gen sorry, just yeah. So I have I have three links. I have the um no no just just the first link. Just leave it there. Um, it, it's a commentary on. Yeah, well, we're not gonna. Well, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. But first, I just want you guys to write these ages or remember them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Genesis seventeen seventeen in the Bible. Again, I want to make a point. The age of Aisha radiyana is not in the Quran. The Prophet Aisha didn't tell us. We do know from Mawqif Sahih Hadith, and think we have no problem with that. But this, I'm giving you from the Bible itself, from their text, their holy text. Okay. Sarah was 90, Abraham was 100, Genesis 17, 17. In Genesis 21, 5, Abraham was 100 when Ishaq or Isaac was born. Okay. In Genesis 23, 1 and 2, in the beginning, we find that Sarah died at the age of 127. Stay with me. You can watch this recording again later if you want to really get this down. Isaac... Ishaq was 40 when he married Rebecca. According to the Bible, look at Genesis 25, 20. Explicit. He was 40 years old when he married Rebecca. Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. According to the Bible, when Ishaq was born, Sarah was 90 years old. That's a conclusion you can take from 1 and 2, from Sarah being 90 when Abraham was 100, and Abraham being 100 when Isaac was born. So she was uh, here, now we find that she was 90 when Isaac was born. Now, Isaac, or Ishaq, was 37 when his mother Sarah died. Okay, look at that. If you take 127, subtract 90 from it, you get 37. And Ishaq being 37 at his mother's death, and he was 37 when Rebecca was born. Because Rebecca was born when Sarah died. So Isaac was 40 according to this, when he married Rebecca, who was three years old. So one more time. 40-year-old. Isaac married Rebecca okay. at three years old. At three years old. And again, according to because that. I'm a Muslim, because I'm a Muslim, they might be like, oh, you're trying to misread our text. And that's why Rami has now brought up a screenshot. And this one I'm going to discuss. This is a, you have the Aramaic or the Hebrew text right there. This is a commentary on the Old Testament or the Torah by Rabbi uh, Basha ibn Ashir. And this here, if you look at the uh, scroll down, you will find that he clearly says, and this is a Jewish classic accepted commentary uh, very early on. Um, this is not something you know, we've come up with recently. Uh, this was, I think, written, uh, Rabbi uh, Rabbi was, uh, I think, I think around 1255 to 1340. This is any a few hundred years old, classic. Well, and this website is a Jewish website, not a Muslim website. So what does he say based on biblical text? He says, and it's very clear, it says the Torah itself testifies that Yitzhak, I mean Yitzhak, was 40 years old when he married uh, Rivka, which is Rebecca. Who, which makes Rebecca three years old when she was married. You, can you highlight that on your screen so people can see? Yeah, actually, it's been highlighted for the last, like, two minutes, three minutes, maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Also, bro, Excellent. Is, there, is there no way so, for you to put us on the bottom of that screenshot while you're screen sharing? That's okay. I don't think so. So okay. as long as everybody else can see it. Okay, so yeah. now we want to be very, very explicit here that these rabbis, Biblical scholars in accepted, well-known biblical commentaries that are right now on Jewish websites. And we're talking about the Old Testament, which, again, as Christians are supposed to believe in, when they give us the Bible, it's not just the New Testament. They have the Old Testament there. They believe that this is the same God that they worship, Jesus, Jesus. was the same God of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So that means, according to their Bible, Isaac, 40-year-old, married a 3-year-old. And this is the works of their God. And this is not just a biblical incident. I'm going to now take you to the second uh, link that uh, I sent to you, Rami. If you can bring that up. Okay. And it's loading in. Okay, so we got Genesis 25, 22. Excellent. So now this is from the Old Testament, part of the Bible. And it clearly mentions here... Um, if we go down, 
that Isaac was 40. Uh, bring it up here. Here, for Genesis twenty five twenty, Isaac was forty years old when he took wife Rebecca. Uh, now, if you look on the right hand side, you will find the commentary from Rashi. Rashi is a standard, well known commentary used for biblical uh, references. It was uh, written by Rabbi Solomon Ibn Ishaq, and he is ten forty to eleven o six. Very classic. It's commonly known as Rashi, uh, and this is, as you can read in the introduction, this is the single most influential Jewish biblical commentary of the Middle Ages. Anybody who studied Judaism, anybody who's Christians that have studied the Old Testament, know that this is a standard. This is the well-known, accepted commentary from the Middle Ages. What does Rashi say? Uh, he says, when Abraham came from Mount Moriah, he received the news Rebekah was born, and he gives the reference, 2220. Isaac was 37 years old because at that time Sarah died from the birth of Isaac until the binding. When Sarah died, there was 37 years since she was 90 years old when Isaac was born and 127 years old when she died. As it is said in 23.1, he's giving all the biblical references here. And the life of Sarah was 127 years. Thus, Isaac was then 37 years old at the period Rebekah was born. And he waited until she was, now pay attention to this, until she was fit for marriage, which was three years, and then married her. So according to the Bible, the age that a girl is fit for marriage is three years of age. And this is not a Muslim commentary. This is not me trying to interpret their text. This is their own scholars and their own commentaries using their own Bible. Okay? Now, three years old. Yeah. Three years old is mm -hmm. the age for marriage, right? According to them, not us, not as Muslims, right? If you want to talk about pedophilia, let's talk about pedophilia, right? But we'll get to it. We'll get to the New Testament too. Relax. All the Christians that are jumping up and down, you guys claim you believe in the Old Testament. It's part of the Bible that you give. You claim it's the same God, so you believe in this. Okay. Now, if you can go to the third link I sent you. All right. Third link. Yes. All right. It's looking like uh, five, four, one. Doctor Joshua Culp. This is the Talmud. This is the commentaries of the Jewish rabbis that base their rulings off of the Bible, off the Old Testament, right, off the of the Torah. And here, uh, in the explanation of it, it mentions uh, in the Talmud itself. This is Jewish law. A girl of the age of three years and one day, if you're more than three years, if you're a day more, may be betrothed by intercourse. If uh, Yawam had intercourse with her, he acquires her thereby. This is Old Testament law. Okay. What does that mean? That if a girl is one day more than three years of age and somebody has sex, whether it's forcefully or not, he is now her husband. She will be betrothed to him. As it says, as stated above, intercourse with a girl over the age of three years counts as intercourse. Therefore, since betrothal may be performed by intercourse, she may be betrothed in this way. If she is li liable for yabon, meaning a previous husband, which I don't know how a three-year-old could have a previous husband, but and the yawam, her dead husband's brother, had intercourse with her, she becomes his wife at three years of age. Read. this. This, again... Look at the website. That's why I shared the link. I'm not just reading it. So people can go look it up. This is not us as Muslims coming in. So if you want to take shots, Don, come. Let's talk about it. Right? Let's bring up your Bible. Right? We'll get to it. Now, again, this means intercourse. Uh, he creates legal obligation, legal relationship. And who is liable for adultery with her? It is her father who marries her off to someone else. Understanding that according to Jewish law, a girl who is a katana. This is a katana. This is a word that's used in their law. Uh, according to the Old Testament, at between the age of 3 and 12 can be given in marriage even without her consent by her father. Right? Because this is the legal age of marriage between 3 and 12 according to the Old Testament laws. Right? 
Now, I know we're going to get some fun uh, Christians that are going to say, oh, you know, this is the Old Testament or, or New Testament. Okay. First thing, as I've clearly mentioned repeatedly now, um, the Bible that you guys give out as Christians contains the Old Testament. You do believe in it, supposedly, right? So this is all applicable to you. But let's talk about Jesus and Mary and Joseph. The earliest document that I could find that discusses the age of Joseph. I'm not talking about people today trying to rewrite history. The earliest that I can find is from the 6th and 7th centuries, which is a book called The History of Joseph the Carpenter. Um, and here, uh, Robengi Motomir Banet, probably mispronouncing that, it's European, um, says in the book, in the history of Joseph the Carpenter, that if you look at early church fathers and their writing, early evangelical church, that they believe that Joseph was 90 years of age. Look up the book yourself. Look, again, Don, if you watch this or any other Christian, go get the book. You can get on Amazon, The History of Joseph the Carpenter. Look it up yourself. Right? What do they say? They say that Joseph was 90 years of age and Mary was 12. How old was she? 12. So now, Catholics, you call Saint Joseph. Christians, you call him a great you know, personality in the biblical structure, the, the stepfather of God, according to you guys, right? Um, you know, one of the first believers, he defended Mary, all of this, right? You're going to call him a pedophile? Let's, let's see, let's you live by what you say. Because if a 90-year-old marries a 12-year-old today, that's what you would call him. But right now you're going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is not in the Bible itself. Well, the age of Aisha, is not in the Quran, or the Hayyut, the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. If you're going to go with historic reports, then we're going to use your historic reports that tell us that Joseph was 90, marrying a 12-year-old. Now, I'm going to mention something just for Don, a little fun thing. Because he mentioned an author during our stream. What was the author? Do you guys remember? John MacArthur. MacArthur, right? John MacArthur. Hmm. John MacArthur was the one that Don brought up, right? Not me, not you. He brought it home. Well, I have a lot of his books. I have his biblical commentary. I also have a book, it's called God in the Manager um, and the Miraculous Birth of Christ, in which John MacArthur, the one that Don brought up, says that, that Mary was likely engaged to Joseph when she was between 12 and 13 years of age. So, there is no getting out of this, Don. Your own John MacArthur says she was 12 years old, 12 to 13, right? The earliest scriptures that you have, the Catholic Encyclopedia, and I don't care if you're not Catholic, just because I've given Christian references, Protestant references, I'm going to give Catholic references. They also mention that, mm -hmm. that according to them, uh, Joseph, when he was 40, he had married another woman. And I'm going to read from this. Um, this is before his marriage to Mary. When he was 40 years of age, Joseph married a woman called Melcha, or uh, Ischa by some, uh, some by others. Then lived 49 years together and had six children, two daughters and four sons. The youngest of them was James, which is mentioned in the Bible, James. The less, the Lord's brother, they say. A year after his wife's death, as the priest announced through Judea, that this they wished to find in the tribe of Judah a respectable man to spouse Mary. Then 12 to 14 years, again, 12 to 14 years of age at the time, years of age, and Joseph was 90 years old. This is not just one reference. It's not just Christians. It's not just Catholics. It's the earliest references. And the current, and John MacArthur himself gives her age at 12. Here again, she's 12 and he's how old? 90 years of old when he went up to Jerusalem amongst the candidates and a miracle manifested in the choice of God had made Joseph and the, this is God's will that he was doing. And two years later, uh, anyway, so... Now, just to give you a couple of references, this is not like some, you know, obscure reference that I found. Bernard uh, Fontana, he also mentioned that Mary was 12 and Joseph was 90. These are the well-respected Christian authors and scholars that they put out there. Um, in Charles Talbert's commentary on the New Testament, this is New Testament on Matthew, he also says that did Mary have sexual relations with Joseph? Because they might be like, oh, Joseph didn't have relations with her. He clearly says, he goes, Mary had sexual relations because in the Bible, in Matthew, it states 
that Mary did not have sexual relations with Joseph until after Jesus' birth. So he says, from amongst the early witnesses, we find that Mary did have a sexual relationship with Joseph after the birth of Jesus, according to Christian scholars. Um, Tony Coffey, he says that Matthew had stated that Joseph had no sexual relations with Mary until she gave birth to a son. This tells us that after Jesus' birth, Joseph, who was past 90 at this time, and Mary, who was around 13, past 12 years of age, had normal sexual relations like any other couple. Tony Coffey, right? So, what does that tell us? If Don and any other Christian is going to be sincere and honest and be straight up about it, then I want them to go in and tell us why Joseph was a pedophile, why uh, Isaac was a pedophile, why all these biblical references tell, tell them. And when they come back and say, oh, no, 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 at that time when Mary was betrothed, that was the average age when people got married, then the same is true for Aisha, radiallahu anha, right? Uh, in fact, the age gap between Joseph and marriage is much more than that of between the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Aisha عنها, and the age gap between Isaac uh, and Rebecca in the Bible is also much more than that which is between the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Aisha عنها. So we, we come at it straight. There's no ambiguity here. We're coming at it with evidences, with biblical verses, with books and references. And if they're honest, Sincere, even right now, if they jump on, I'm here, I'm ready to take a face-to-face -face conversation with anybody who wants to do it. Sheikh, just to quickly interject, a lot of people are commenting this. What's the age of majority in Islam? And from what I know, the age of majority is that you are mature. That's it. The age of maturity, not majority. Age of maturity is that you are mature now. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, in Islam, we discuss this issue of bulugh, of who becomes baligh. And there are many different signs, signs between a man and a woman that shows when they are physically mature. Um, one of them is for a woman, for example, if she gets her hay, if she gets her period. Um, for a man, and there is certain hair that grows in certain places, certain dreams, certain things that we look at to know whether they are baligh. But that also doesn't mean that they're ready for marriage. Because as the kutub of fiqh, the fiqh books discuss, that marriage is done when somebody is physically capable and able for marriage. And the, many of the uh, commentaries then also talk about a mental state, right? So what does that mean? Um, a girl may be at a age where her period doesn't come because in her culture, or her environment, the period comes very late or some that come very early, but she may not be physically ready for marriage. So at that time, we would not allow that to be a, an Islamic marriage. Islam looks at what we call arf. Arf means the local customs and traditions to look at marriage age, right? Meaning that if, uh, for example, in a country where there is no education system, there's no schooling, um, the average life like expectancies are very low and people get married early, as long as the woman is physically ready, natural indicators of marriage, and the man is physically ready, then they could get married. In other cultures, if there is a delayed period, meaning the people are going to school, they have things and they want to wait till they're older, nothing wrong with that. We look at the urf there. We don't allow marriage until somebody has the natural indicators of marriage. We don't give an age because if we said 10, not every 10 year old is the same everywhere else, right? In America, for example, the legal age for marriage in many states used to be 10 years of age. And now they've bumped it up to 16. And some states 18, but most states still at around 16. Some are still, I think, at 14. You can look it up. Why? Because time and location differ. Till today in Africa, there are countries where the lifespans are very low, education is not existent, and women regularly get married at 10 and 12 years of age. And we sitting in America to say that's wrong is, is very um, you know, hypocritical of us because even in America, that used to be the fact. And I'll say one more thing. One of the hypocrisies of Western society is when they talk about child marriages, they don't talk about sex of underage children. We have middle school kids that are pregnant, right? Uh, I went to a school that had a daycare. I mean, and, and this was my middle school in San Diego um, because so many girls had already, especially if you look at the Latina community, so many girls had already had children. Right? I, ha I have people that I went to school with that at 12 and 13 got pregnant, meaning they were already having sex before that. So if somebody is old enough to be having sex, why aren't they old enough to get married? You know, this is something that we find as a hypocrisy in Western society. 
Because at age 18, for example, where did we come up with that number? You know, some people at 18 may not physically be ready for marriage. Some people at 18, maybe. May, some people at 16 may be ready, you know. So in Islam, we don't go by just putting an arbitrary number. We look at, first and foremost, the natural indicators of the body. If a woman has her period, if a man has uh, certain natural indicators, I don't want to get into detail here, but in our fiqh we discuss it. Then we say that they are naturally, the, the nature of the person shows that they are ready for sexual intercourse and ready for marriage. That doesn't mean they should get married at that age. They may not be mentally prepared. They don't have to. Islam doesn't say, right, when that happens, halat get married. No. But if they are mentally uh, mature and in the urf, in the tradition of the Islam, they can, then they should. Right? So this is the Islamic rulings. All right. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Fayyad, one thing I want to say is uh, you can turn your mic up on your end, most likely. Uh, secondly, I think that... I uh, hear an echo for a second, but I, my my gain is the highest, bro. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, no worries, inshallah, no worries. We'll, we'll deal with it afterwards. Okay, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. I think that was clear for everyone. One thing I want to add is um, just a little note. Uh, I want, once I heard it, it, never left my mind. In California, there is no minimum age requirement with parental consent. So if Aisha was alive today or anyone nowadays, they could legally get married with parental consent, which she had, Aisha radiallahu anha, in California today. Did. If you have a problem with that, go to the county, file some kind of complaint, talk to your mm -hmm. uh, political representative, and throw your tantrums there, Don. Maybe he lives in Cali himself, I don't know. Throw your tantrums there, go to the county and complain. And, and again, I mean, even if you look at uh, age of consent or age of marriage today, that's all arbitrary. I mean, we're just making up numbers, to be honest, right? Because if you look at, like I said, if your life expectancy is between 30 and 35, you can't expect somebody to wait till they're 20 years old to have their first child, yeah. right? They won't even be, you know, 10, 15 years old, the parents will be dead, right? Yeah. So how do you raise children that way? And if you have no schooling system, what do you do? I mean, when, once you're baligh, when you're, when, when you're mature, when you're physically, natural indicators show that you're ready for marriage, you're just going to sit around and wait 10 years for what? You know, so... So that's the, that's the whole point, that people are looking at this all wrong. But again, and inshallah, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to let you guys continue having your fun. But uh, we have a conference I got to get to here. But uh, I, I will, again, leave with a couple of summary points. One, uh, regarding the age of Aisha, no doubt that she was at an appropriate age of marriage for that time period because none of the mushrikeen, the polity, has ever objected to her marriage. Her parents didn't object to her marriage. Nobody else in that society. Until the 1900s, Western academics didn't object to that marriage because their own kings. And in my video that I have about the age of Aisha, I show Western kings and queens that got married at much younger ages than Aisha. And this was in the 16th century and 17th century, not the 6th. Right? So uh, the hypocrisy of Don and others in the West, it, 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 it's mind-blowing, right? Secondly, if you're going to throw some kind of statements out there, then I want you to go back and look at the Bible. And I want you to look at the references that I gave. And I, I want you to look at those commentaries. And I want you to look at those references to the age of Joseph and the age of Mary. And then I want you to use the same standard. Be fair and balanced and use the same standard in what you're talking about. And lastly, I want to go back to this, that none of this has to do with creedal issue. None of this has to do with aqidah. This is just somebody who was on a live stream, got caught in showing that the Bible shows that Jesus didn't know the hour. He didn't know knowledge that the Father knew. So now he can't be co-equal because he doesn't know. And your creedal issues fall apart. The death of Judas falls apart. The, the, the clear contradictions in the Bible show that what you're basing your salvation on is a book that has been flawed, has been changed, and edited, and has clear numeric contradictions. Your own author that you mentioned, John MacArthur, says that there are copious errors in the Bible. And now that your base of your creed and your belief and your book fell apart, you're looking for excuses just to take shots. I want you to go back to creedal issues and go back to understanding and use a fair and balanced way. And if you want to jump on with us another time, inshallah, I'll be more than well, willing to come back and have a conversation directly uh, with Don or anybody else, inshallah. Inshallah, ya Rabb. Barakallah fikum. Hayyakum Allah, jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. All right, so you guys heard it here, saw it here first. Very clear, 
mm-hmm. very like it's it's cut out, bro. It's, it's clear cut. There is no way out. Don, all you can do now is be fair. Say that you are on an emotional high, and apologize for your blatant statements, or make the same statements about Christianity. And at the end of the day, know that you actually have achieved nothing for Christianity. You have achieved nothing for Christianity, and actually, even nothing against Islam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the bridge between belief and disbelief is abandoning Salah. If you're struggling with your Salah right now, well, we got the perfect solution for you. And that solution is the Adan app. This cell phone, we usually have it and it's using us instead of us using it. But with the Adan app, you can use it in perfect alignment with your life. The Adan app is already used by 40 million believers around the world. Why? Because it caters to your Islamic lifestyle. On top of the Salah times, you get du'as, dhikr, the Islamic calendar, Ramadan calendar, Zuhur and Iftar times, Hajj and Umrah guide, Qibla finder, and much more for free. So download the Adon app now.